Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and we're going to trade Thomas Hurdle to five different teams for a reason. That's what we're going to be doing today because a really, really good insider has Thomas Hurdle at the top of the list of players to be traded by the deadline from the San Jose Sharks, Sharks Thomas Hurdle, 28-year-old. We're going to look at him. We're going to look at some of the teams he could be traded to. And we're going to look at the article and all of that. Uh, good times. Okay, so this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and uh, all of the teams within those four major sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And the NHL Polo Wisdom Show, which is a show I do. Eh. Oh, this is a Perlo Den. See up there in the corner? Manscaped. If you like those fine products and you go promo code Perlo Dance, you get 20% off of those suckers. But the NHL Perlo Wisdom Show, 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern. Totally interactive hockey show. So much fun. Love to have you there. Let's take a look at this fine article that was put together at the Hockey Writers. Uh, Mr. Parsons from the Hockey Writers is a guy I admire a lot. He's a, he's a really good writer. Um, so he says that as per Frank Sarafal at Fally, and this is sort of the insider with the daily faceoff, um, I, I – I trust Saravalli quite a bit. I Most of the stuff he does, he doesn't like to put himself out too much. Uh, they do goaltender. Uh, if you if you want to know who's going to be in net the night before or as soon as it's possible, this is a really good site to go to for that. And they got to get that information from someone, right? So he's got a bit of an insight. Uh, with the holiday roster freeze, and hopefully the worst of COVID-19 roast, roast, uh, roster decimation in the rearview mirror, it is suspected that the NHL's trade market will begin to heat up now. He has, uh, he made, Cervalli made a list of 20 trade targets, which San Jose Sharks forward sits at the top of. Hurdle's name has already been a big topic of conversation. He is unsigned, having a fantastic season. He's on pace for a career-high 39 goals and leads the Sharks with 16 strikes and would provide significant return for the Sharks' future. Absolutely. Uh, he notes that with the Sharks now out of the playoff ra race, expect the New York Rangers on this one. And we're going to talk about the New York Rangers, but we're not going to talk about them right away. Um, but we, we have five teams here and the New York Rangers are one. Why wouldn't I do that? If an insider saying, take a look at the New York Rangers. Uh, let's look at hurdle first though. He is remaining cap hit is 3 million right now. So by the deadline it's probably going to be about two and a half million cap space. Uh, so half of the cap is gone. Now that still has to fit into a team's cap, right? But he's only 28 years old. He is, as I said, un, uh, unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, which would mean that he could be a rental or you could sign him long term right away if he's willing to do so. And I'm sure the deal would be contingent on whether they resign it. They usually teams usually will say an added second or third or what have you if he resigns with. Your club. He's a big boy at 6'2, strong centerman, has been with San Jose for quite a few years. Uh, here you can see he's also got a moderate no trade clause. So, oh, and he has a su player submits a three team trade list. So they got to work out it. He, he's got three, only three teams he can go to. They got to work out a deal that he's going to be happy with, which is really going to affect the leverage that 
San Jose has in order to get a return here. We'll talk about that as we do our trades here. And what do I mean by that? It's going to affect their leverage. Well, because there's only three teams and he can really basically just choose where he wants to go, whatever team he's going to knows that there aren't too many other teams involved in the trade. And they're going to basically say, you know, I don't want to give you that. And San Jose really either has two choices, either trade him or lose him for nothing. Because if he's not going to sign, he's not going to sign. So it could be that they don't really give all that much up. And uh, we'll take a look at some of those, some of the uh, teams and what, what possibly. He's been with San Jose since 2014. He was originally drafted by the San Jose Sharks, yes, yeah, 17th overall in 2012. So actually he's been with the Sharks since 2012. Long tenure. This is going to be hard. Tough decision for him. But it sounds like he has decided he wanted he wants to move on. From what I gather, San Jose was really kind of thinking of wanting to re-sign him. But they are sort of should be heading towards a rebuild. And maybe that's double talk and the whole time they just wanted to re-sign him anyways. All right. Let's look at or not re-sign him anyways. Let's look at some of the teams. Columbus Blue Jackets are my first team. And you're going to say... Yeah, but they're not a contender, and you would be right. They're not a contender for sure. So I don't know if it would be on his list. Now, here's the thing. The Columbus Blue Jackets aren't that bad of a team, and there's a lot of upside to their roster. And there's this. This is the big thing to me. Thomas Hurdle may be interested in going to Columbus and signing long-term, depending on what the number may be, because he would be their number one center immediately. Boone Jenner is not a number one center. He shouldn't be playing in the number one spot. Maybe number two. So now you got to look at return. Let's say he says, after talking to everyone, he looks at it and goes, probably going to get the most money in Columbus. He's probably going to talk and say, are you going to sign Patrick Lyon? Eh? Because I'm sure he would want to be talking to somebody like Patrick Lyon. Now, the thing about this also is Thomas Hurdle is a great two-way player too, which would go well with Lyon, eh, who is not. I think Columbus is going to be heavy on the phone here. I really do. And they will be looking to talk to the agent and put a number out there to get him signed to stay there. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, well, he's going to want to go to a contender. I'm not so sure about that. I think he may be looking to just, you know, it's possible he could just want to be a number one center. He's never had that chance in San Jose. They've had Couture there. They've had Thornton there. All, every time he's been, everywhere he's been, he's been a player, a second-line player or third-line center. Now, he can also play wing as well, right? But if he wants to be a main-line centerman and probably get the most money he can get, this would probably be the place that he could go. And Columbus is like, a, you know, not going to make the playoffs this year probably. They're not far out of the playoffs. And they have a brilliant general manager in Kekalainen who will probably turn this team around really quick. So what's the return? Well, Jack Roslovich has already fallen out of favor in uh, Columbus after coming in from Winnipeg, which is a red flag. But you got to remember, they don't have much leverage here in San Jose because he's really going to take a team and that's it. And Columbus really could say, well, I'll just wait till he becomes a free agent. We don't really need him right now. So the hard part about this would be Columbus kind of has a leverage here quite a bit because if they find out that he wants to go there, they don't really need him to get where they need where they're going this year. It's not likely that they're a playoff team. So um, if they were to do it, it would be like Jack Roslovich, uh 
you might be able to get a prospect out of it, but not really a real good one. I know Liam Foudy, Foudy has been having troubles in the AHL. Maybe those two players, and that would be it. Um, too early of a first for Columbus. And not, what I mean by that is that they're going to be drafting too early in the draft to give up their first for, for Hurdle. Now, here's the thing. You could do what they could do, though, San Jose could do is say, hey, you know, you're treating them like a rental, but if you re-sign them, we want a second or third or whatever the case may be. And then Columbus could basically say, well, we'll just wait. And then, and then you know, then San Jose has to convince Columbus that there's other teams involved. And if there are, then Columbus may bite on this, right? Here's the other thing. They get him for the rest of the year if he signs, if they trade for him, they have the ability to give him an eight-year contract. If they wait to free agency, you're only allowed to give a player that you do not have on your roster seven years. The only way you can have the only way you can give him eight years is if you own his rights in which they can make the trade with San Jose for his rights to give him $8 million a year. But San Jose at that time can say, no, screw you. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> Forget it. So they got – San Jose is a little bit of leverage that way. But um, they don't have too much leverage in this trade. They really want to hope that um, other teams can pony up the cash – and promise him a spot on the roster that's going to satisfy him. So let's look at what some of those other teams may be. Now, the Dallas Stars, I think, would be in on this. So if Hurdle's looking to win a cup, like right away, to go on a cup-winning team, that's what he wants to do. He's not worried about number one center money or and all that kind of stuff like that. He's just looking to go – He's looking to go on a team that is a contender. Well, Dallas will probably be in, would probably be in on this trade, but there is a bit of a problem here. And that's the thing with Columbus. Also, I forgot to mention, they have the cap space to do a deal like that. Dallas doesn't. So they would have to give up um, players back to make it work financially for them now and for the future as well. In fact, I would go as far as to say, if we look at their cap, you know, they got Joe Pavelski coming off the books, but I imagine they're going to want to resign him. Radulov, I'm not so sure. They could let him go, and now they've got hurdles. So, yes, you know what? They could sign him for a long-term deal. Uh, what's their... Yeah, they're going to have $24 million in cap space after this. They have players to sign. They have Klingberg. Uh, Joe Kivaranta won't cost much. Signing Pav Pav uh, Pavelsk, Joe Pavelski, they could probably do it for a lesser deal, like the 4 to $5 million range. So they could have some space here and they let, if they let Radulov go. And Hurdle could take that spot. I think they'd very, be very bullish on this. Now, because Columbus is in here... Columbus is going to want to pay him like a first line center. So they now in Dallas, also you got the tax situation in Dallas is better. It's better than almost anywhere. They might be able to get away with a million less. I think Colonel's going to get eight to nine million a year. Okay. He's putting up almost a point a game this year. So that would be almost what that would be over what Radulov was making, and that would also take up the money you might save on a uh, Pavelski. Also, Jamie Ben is coming off the books, and I imagine you can sign him for significantly less too. So money wise, this would work. So Dallas can go to his agent and say, "Look, we need to get you a little bit younger. He's twenty eight years old." We can give you the same money that Columbus can, uh, maybe a little less, but our tax situation is different, and you're on a probable contender 
right now. Living in a pretty sexy city in Dallas. Maybe he does that. So what are they going to give up? Uh, I think they'd have to give up some for something for right now. And if I'm San Jose with what I already have, I'm going to be looking at a guy like Dennis Gurianoff, which is hard for them to give up. But he hasn't really hit it. Dennis hasn't really hit it up, hit it out of the park the way they wanted to see uh, from him. And he still has some upside, but 14 points in 30 games for a guy who's not great defensively. And they kind of got to hope that he improves. And they want to win right now. But if they have Hurdle, look at this lineup for this year. All of a sudden now, you trade Gurianov. Ben can play left side. Hurdle can play the middle. And you've got Ben, Hurdle, and Sagan. Robertson, Hintz, Pavelski. Solid, solid top two. And the rest of the lines keep the same. Are they got people that are hurt that could come up here? Not really. So, solid top two there. And uh, Hurdle may just go for that sort of thing. So, tell me what you think, Dallas fans. And by the way, all everybody, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, come on over to the to the world of Frolic so I can you can see me on my live program. Uh, next, New York Rangers. Which is what we were talking about before. Uh, that that the uh, writer, original writer of the article talked about the New York Rangers, thinking that they would be heavy in this. And I could see that they would be heavy in this. This is almost a point-of-game player. For some reason, they are not. The New York Rangers are not big on Strom. Strom is a free agent, I believe. Is he a restricted or is he free? Let's take a look. He's a UFA, and maybe the numbers just aren't working out. But I don't know what numbers he's asking for, but Hurdle's going to be asking for eight. And I imagine Strom would come back here. Would Strom would uh, go back in this deal. Simply because if they're not going to sign him, at least San Jose will get another center. I also think it would be so Strom plus. I think it would be a little more. I think the Rangers would have to give up a little more to get him simply because they need to give up a center anyways. Um, it may not be too much more because, like I said, there's they got to work a fight here with the teams. It all depends on if there's a little bit of competition going on between these teams. And Hurdle is going, oh, I could go here, I could go there. That would cause it. If Hurdle just takes a team and says, I want to go there, you might even be able to get with if, – if the Rangers are where he wants to go, you might even be able to get away with just Ryan Strom because they have no leverage. Now, you could be Ryan Strom in a second because if if they resign. Maybe Philip Heidel. Maybe they like Philip Heidel better. And that might be the guy they're really floating out there because he has not – he has struggled. And I really liked Philip Heidel. I thought he was going to be a solid number two center. But he hasn't progressed in New York. Eight points. It's, his production has dropped almost every year. But maybe San Jose will give him a shot. And they could go Heidel – I don't think they could go Heidel and Strom, one or the other in a pick. Tell me what you would, what you think, Rangers fans. Let's look at what Hurdle would look like on their roster. you got to remember, the New York Rangers could sort of be going for it here this year. I mean, not totally, but if they can re-sign Hurdle and they lose Strom, you're going to put Hurdle in here. Uh, who who does put up more production than Ryan Strom. He's a better two-way player. He's a little bigger. He plays a more aggressive game, and I think that's the reason why they're not high on Ryan Strom, especially if he's looking somewhere in the 7 million range or something like that, and they can get Hurdle at 8, right? 
So Hurdle would go in between Panarin and Goudreau right now. Um, if Heidel could get off his butt, Hurdle could turn over here to the right side. And then you'd have Kreider, Zabonijad, and Kako, who I really like. I think he's going to be a very good player in the Palat area, a Palat type player, like in Tampa Bay. Panarin, Strom, and Goudreau. Uh, or sorry, Strom, Hurdle, and Goudreau. I think that's an upgrade. I think that is definitely an upgrade a little bit. And I and I've heard the Rangers on Hurdle over and over and over again. So. They probably, obviously, think it's an upgrade as well. Next, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And this is my final one. I had another one here. Oh, I forgot to go to the Minnesota Wild. Sorry, one more. Next, the Minnesota Wild. And this I'll do really quick because I've just had so many people asking about the Minnesota Wild and Hurdle. The thing about the hurdle going to the Minnesota Wild is that he would basically just be a rental. And I just don't think Hurdle's going to go for a rental. I think if he's going to do it, he's going to take a team he can sign, possibly sign long term with. Um, and I, Minnesota, with the cap problem that they're going to have with Parisi and Suter Biod and all that, I doubt very much they're going to want to give Hurdle that eight to nine million dollars a year that he's looking for. It may be something that he would strongly consider because he gets to play with Kaprizov. Minnesota is a pretty killer team. Um, he definitely would make them more of a cup contender for sure. They definitely could use him as a center. However. They got Rossi coming up right now. Um, in fact, isn't he in the lineup right now? Oh, they don't have him down. Did they send him back down again? Oh, Marco Rossi, they sent him back down again. That's their guy for their future. And I don't think Hurdle's going to want to sit there going, being, hey, am I going to be the back seat again when Rossi comes up? Right? And you got Jolak Erickson Eck there, who is going to be on. Salki conversations in the future and stuff like that. It's a really sexy thought. And I had a lot of people from Minnesota asking me about it. So I thought I'd go into basically why I don't think it's likely, but I understand why you would want him. And I understand why you would think that he Minnesota was a possibility. But honestly, I don't think it's a possibility. Minnesota fans. Next, Pittsburgh Penguins. And this one was one that kind of crept up on me. I didn't think about it right away. It took me a while to realize that the Pittsburgh Penguins could be the could be the could be the place. I think this is a big possibility to tell you the honest truth. And I'll tell you why, and this is why I wanted to bring up before we look at the depth chart. You think Pittsburgh has no cap room, right? And they don't this year, but they can probably make the cap work. Uh, in this situation, another thing San Jose could have done in all of this is they could retain some money this year to get a better pick. And in Pittsburgh, that's something that they could do. Now, it would give them more return probably. And if Hurdle is in on Pittsburgh, if that's the team he wants to go to, I think there's a really good chance that there's a possibility here because Brian Rust, okay, you're going to have to pay Brian Rust, no doubt about that. They're not going to let him go, I'm sure of it. I'm sure he doesn't want to go. Kapanen is a restricted free agent. He's going to get a raise. However, you don't have to sign Carter, Jeff Carter. And he probably, may, he might even sign for less. You don't have to sign uh, Zach Aston Reese or Yvonne Rodriguez is somebody you probably have to sign. Chris Letang is an unrestricted free agent. What are you going to do? What's his money going to be now at 34 years old? So there's a lot of look, – look at all the guys they have here as a UFA coming off the books. They have options where they could sign 
hurdle to a long term and not sign some of these guys. It's very possible. And for this year, you got a cup contender. You got a serious cup contender. I wanted to look at. He's from the Czech Republic. So, and oh, Czech Republic. If you're from the Czech Republic, playing in Pittsburgh is quite the deal. Yarmer Jager, man. And, and European players do this. They have a tendency to follow their heroes. Yarmer Jager was a hero in. Uh, Yarmer Jager was a hero in Pittsburgh. So it's possible. I think it's very possible they could do a deal and maybe work out a deal afterwards. The opportunity to play with Sidney Crosby, to play with the Pittsburgh Penguins that are becoming a legendary team in the NHL. I think at the very least, Hurdle would have his, – his ears would perk up quite a bit. And imagine you got Malkin – who also has to sign a new deal, by the way, and probably will be making less money in that deal. Maybe not. He's got injury issues. They Maybe he bends to allow a guy like Hurdle to come here. You put Malkin in there. Uh, Rodriguez can play center as well. Hurdle can play right wing. You can put like you can mix and match all over the stuff. You could Rodriguez, Crosby, and Gunsel seem to be working really well. You that's this might be the thing that's going to hold Hurdle back here is that at, at least at the moment they might have a difficult spot finding him a spot unless they put Jeff Carter down here in the middle. And you could put Bluger on the wing. They got a lot of guys that can play a lot of different positions here in Pittsburgh. So you could put Hurdle here. You could put Carter uh, Bluger on the left side with Hurdle and Kapanen. Uh, I like him on the left side, actually. And Carter down here in the middle with Austin, Re uh, Austin Reese and, Sa Sa and Simone. Carter is a very underrated defensive player. And you got so much depth now if they make a deal like this. I could definitely see it, especially if they're happy with Jari. Which this year they should be, are they? And maybe they'll roll the dice with him in the playoffs again. Um, Brian Rust, I forgot. I forgot Brian Rust has still got to get in the roster here. So you put Brian Rust on the left side with Hurdle and Kapanen, Gunsel, Crosby, and Rodriguez, and you're set in your top six. And you can put Heinen and Carter down here. Then you've got an amazing top four. With Aston Rishan Bluger on, on your fourth line. Super depth. I don't know if Hurdle would do it. Tell me what you would think, Pittsburgh fans. I, I didn't even talk about what the return would have to be. That's right. The return would have to be. So maybe you don't have a Teddy Bluger anymore. Bluger has to go back. Because they're going to have to give up some money here somehow. Say San Jose retains some money. You get Bluger. Your first and a prospect like Anthony D'Angelo or something like that. I don't even know if you have to give up that much. If Hurdle wants to go to Pittsburgh, doesn't want to go to any other team, you might not even have to give up that. What do you think, Pittsburgh fans? Would you do something like that? I think I would. I don't know. The, that new uh, management may be holding on tight to their first. Heck, stall. We'll see. But if they're not... I could see that. Well, that's my full 42, yeah, boys and girls. That's all I have to give to you today. Uh, that's our five teams. Hurdle is traded to. I'm going to have much more of these. Go check out my other ones. We have uh, Toffoli. We have Kessel. Go check out that one. That one got a lot of action. A lot of people watch that one. But that's why, and, and many more. Go, I do these all the time. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.